Ladies and gentlemen, this is Gail Morgan welcoming you to the Libertarian Counterpoints Knuckleheads of Liberty podcast. You've heard their point, now listen to the counterpoint. Welcome to the Knuckleheads of Liberty podcast. We are coming at you on August 11th, 2021. Um, there's always plenty to talk about in a Biden administration. The news never ends. Uh, but before we get into that, let me introduce you to our panel. In our upper right-hand corner, we have Leon, the word Brathwaite, last word in Liberty. He is a retired engineer in the state of California. In our lower right-hand corner, we have our screaming eagle of freedom, Tim Everett. He is a pilot in the state of California. And in our lower left-hand corner, we have a special guest today. Uh, he is Matt Nodler uh, from caucusroom.com. And he is also a uh, former legislator as well in the state of Colorado. Uh, so we'll love to pick his brain today, too, on some of these issues. Um, Jason, Jason, I must say that um, Matt will, will tell you, probably he's too kind a person to tell you, but I am not. You just <laughs> look at his name. His oh, last I name. Did. Okay. Yeah, you know what? I mean, we need... I used to butcher need... Leon's name all the time. Yes. <laughs> Yes, personal experience we can hear. That's right. <laughs> we, you know, just just think how much we need Matt Needler. We need him <laughs> really bad. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that, Matt. Feel free oh, to correct it, me. Yes, <laughs> uh, okay. You know, Tim, uh, when well, I ran, Tim, when I ran for the legislature, the artist who did the little yard sign. Yeah. Uh, he showed it to me. I was like, oh, it looks nice. He's like, no, but do you see there, there was a little line in between the, the name and it was, he said, see, it's shaped like a needle. And I was like, <laughs> 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 don't think I need the needle, uh, the needle that yeah. badly, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Well, okay. you know, as far as as far as unforgettable <laughs> names go, Cuomo is in the news recently, and he's going to be hard to forget for a while. <laughs> yes, <laughs> everything is just blowing up on him and his brother over at CNN as well. Yes. So I, you know, it's uh, the wheels are just coming off the the Cuomo train over there in New York, and it, it certainly uh, has a lot of mismanagement going on in New York as well as in California and some of these other places, but. Uh, you know, finally, uh, things have come apart and he has resigned. So as of yesterday, he has stepped down from office. He is apparently going to hang around for two weeks, though. So uh, it's interesting to figure out why he's doing that. But <laughs> I guess I'll, I'll, I'll let you guys speculate on that. But uh, yeah, it's sexual harassment uh, on top of a lot of other mismanagement. But the sexual harassment is really the thing that, that uh, lit the fire. And it's a Democrat run state. So that's that's what drove this so uh you guys have any thoughts on this you know what what is going to be very interesting about this as we go forward is how the media is going to cover this because there are two angles of course como andrew como is going to resign as governor and then the other angle is what's going to happen to his brother at cnn who was helping him respond to the sexual harassment and allegations but if you remember during the pandemic this was Jesus Christ for us, okay? He was handling the, 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 his, his COVID re response so well. He was on TV every day telling us all these great, wonderful things he was doing in, um, in, in New York. But come to find out that this man and his mandates end up killing 15,000 people in nursing homes, including Janice Dean's in-laws. Our illustrious president yesterday and, said, and, and oh. just for the viewers too, uh, Janice Dean is a uh, um, a, a Fox Weather Channel. Yes, person, yes, yes. Chief Meteorologist at, at, at Fox News. Oh, okay, okay. Yes. Yeah. And yesterday, um, after he announced his resignation, our illustrious president Joe Biden said, "Oh, he did a great job. He did a great job, except for his personal behavior. Oh, really? Fifteen thousand people are dead because of this man, and he did a great job." We must be living on the moon someplace. You must be on another planet. Probably that's where Joe Biden is in his half senile <laughs> mind. Go ahead, Matt. Uh, you know, well, I work for a uh, governor. I was a I was a policy advisor to him, and uh, it is a it's an extraordinarily powerful position. I don't think you know the you have the power of the pardon, um, which is one of the reasons a governor walks around with a security detail, but not a senator or a congressman. Um, and you have the power to, uh, as we all know, apparently they have extraordinary powers we didn't even, you know, knew existed before this lockdown, apparently. But um, 
I don't know why he wants that for two more weeks, but I certainly am sp- suspicious about that. And uh, what, what can he put in? Um, and one more thought on that is just the, 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 med- the nursing homes are typically funded by, uh, there's a lot of federal funding involved, Medicare, Medicaid. Um, and, and so I, that shoe cannot, uh, it has not fully dropped yet, I don't think. I think there's a lot more uh, there in terms of actual federal uh, fraud uh, that it, it would appear that he personally has some liability within. And I do hope that's, that's prosecuted. But again, you know, governors are so powerful. I, I, if I was New York, I would not accept two weeks. I would say, you know, it's now or the legislature is going to, you know, convene on thir- you know, tomorrow and, and boot you so that you can't pardon yourself from something. No. So do you think do you think that this whole two week thing that he, well I think he's actually going to step down on August twenty fourth is what was said. So do you think yes he he's trying to do do what uh, pardon himself in in, in no, the interim? No, I, I don't know. I would. I'm not sure we could put anything past him uh, given the speech yesterday. He he did not seem to express any guilt. Uh, so, right. uh, but. You know, there's there are a lot of favors that can be doled out, or uh, you know, as long as you've got the power of the state seal and you can press that <clears throat> st- state seal down on a piece of paper, it gives a lot of authority to things you can do. So uh, I don't know what he would do. Uh, I don't know enough about New York politics, but it certainly have. By the way, can we from now on can we call him Emmy Award winning? Yes. New yes. York governor. <laughs> <laughs> Emmy, Emmy Award winning yeah. and. Italian stud. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Everybody wants to be a Cuomosexual, at least as of uh, yeah. like a few months yeah. ago. Yeah. <laughs> I, I couldn't figure him out, though, because he was simultaneously admitting guilt and then giving a reason for it, you know, and, and denying, uh, denying guilt, admitting guilt, and giving the reason. You know, okay, I didn't have, I didn't sexually abuse those, but if I did, it was because I was Italian. You know? Yeah, and we all know guess, how out of control yes. we Italians are. When yes, it comes I have, I have, I have, and kiss everyone. Okay? <laughs> yeah. I have and kiss everyone. So he said yeah. all these photos of him kissing women, kissing men, yeah. kissing everybody. Oh, oh really, really, yeah. really? Yeah. please. Keep your he's keep your hands to yourself. Don't don't kiss me. He's just he's just showing affection, Leon. Come on. <laughs> well, you know that's the funny thing for this Emmy Award winner. The first thing he does in his defense is to try and make another movie about himself, essentially going around and, and doing almost what he's he's uh, you know being accused of, <laughs> and, uh, running around touching everybody. But <laughs> uh, but you know apparently the touching was a little bit more than what he was showing in his, his yes. uh, you know his little Hollywood video there. But uh, you know it does raise a really good question though about. Uh, you know, the idea that that state pardon power, in some ways, it's, it's a lot more powerful than for him than, uh, you know, when people were worried about Trump potentially pardoning himself, because Trump can only pardon himself for federal crimes, right? Mm-hmm. So, I mean, uh, somebody could still charge him with a state crime, and some some states were actually gearing up to do that. But, you know, uh, Cuomo is, is really, the, these are mostly state crimes, I guess, so yes. he could really pardon himself for a lot of this or make deals to avoid... Uh, problems and biden's already eliminated the uh investigation that was going into him right yeah, exactly uh, yes the, so the, the, uh, nursing home. the nursing home investigations yes yeah I mean, uh, yes so cover up cover up cover up well that brings us into another topic we wanted to talk about on the show today and that is uh some of the crazy stuff that was going on in the chop zone in seattle and i'm going to try to oh let's see i don't those visuals up so uh, that's okay but if, if you remember on the chop zone that was something where uh in seattle there was about a six block area that was uh taken over literally by protesters and this was happening during the summer of 2020 uh mayor jenny durkin self-described it as a summer of love, love. Let, yeah when yeah. she let uh, six blocks be taken over and a police precinct be overrun uh, in that area. And so they let the protesters have the zone for about, uh, I guess it was 
I don't know, somewhere in the neighborhood of three or four weeks, I think it was. Um, I, I can't remember the exact amount of time. Uh, but during that time, during that summer of love, people uh, who had <clears throat> property there, they, they couldn't get police service, uh, you know, fire service, any of that stuff, because it was all blocked off by uh, sort of a gang of thugs with guns <laughs> yes. and yes. That, that described themselves as the new police. And eventually uh, those people wind up shooting a few people within this chop zone and a few people died. And now there are lawsuits abound that are happening. Uh, uh, the Seattle Times has had a uh, public records request uh, for uh, Seattle to try and get some of these communications that were going on between the leaders. Uh, the family, I believe, of one of the uh, shooting victims was uh, is also coming after the city for some of these records. And the city has just said, oh, we've lost the records. Uh, we, we, we set these things to expire in 30 <laughs> days on the phones, even though that was illegal. And we don't know what happened, but we just don't have, uh, we've lost a lot of the communications between these leaders. A at what point is this just like a criminal gang of thugs that's running this place? I mean, they literally take away people's property, right? Uh, people who paid for police protection don't get it. And, you know, it's, uh, you know, hey, hey, we don't even have any records now of what happened. Sorry. You guys have any thoughts on that? Well, I do. If I can interrupt, uh, I uh, I know where those records can be found and talk about a gang of thugs. But, you know, there's uh, four states providing water to cool the uh, the servers, the gigantic, enormous computers uh, controlled by the National Security uh, Security Administration. So the NSA has been come from what people tell me. Like uh, like one person named Ed Snowden, for example, they they, they uh, save all the metadata on everybody's text. So if they you know if if they're missing these texts, the first place I'd look would be the NSA. I'd say, come on, guys, this is your time to shine bright for all of us Americans who have been had their privacy completely annihilated by you guys. Come on, cough them up. Let's have these texts. That I, we know you've got them, okay? <laughs> uh, no, I, no, anyway. I, I'd say one of the things they were pushing for around the country, the protesters, was, was to make police officers uh, liable, more personally liable for their actions. It would seem like all of government is liable for that for for the negligence that jason just described i mean it's if you know if it's i i personally believe police officers need need more of that uh liability protection otherwise they won't be they, they will be too scared to make the tough call when they have to make the tough call to, to uh uh to do something um and you know because it, it's probably a reason we're seeing crime increase I, in my opinion but uh just set that aside even even accept all of the arguments from the other side then by definition, you should also make the, the the elected officials who are making really bad decisions liable for their really bad decisions as well, um, or for their negligence and losing evidence uh, uh, on something like that. It, uh, if, if of all people, the only people in government are personally liable for their bad decisions are, are police officers, then something's mm. really wrong. But you know, but you know, the, the angle the angle to this that I that I see here is this disturbing pattern that we have seen throughout the years, where if the IRS decides to audit me and they say, well, Leon produced this record or record number one, record number two, record number three, and I say, oops, you know, I accidentally lost that. I wonder how far they will lose my behind in jail. Mm -hmm. How far you think? But yet over and over, government officials keep accidentally inadvertently misplacing records and losing them and nothing ever happened to them we had a major scandal during the obama administration involving the irs by the way and some of the people who were in charge at the time and they accidentally misplaced some records and up to now it have never been resolved nobody went to prison everybody is fine every some people are retired and they, everything is good and wonderful but government officials always get away with these sort of things and they are not held accountable. But the private citizen, whenever they are dealing with the government, if it's a subpoenaed record and we lose it, oh my goodness gracious, we have to go find a lawyer to defend ourselves to keep our behinds out of jail. 
something is wrong with that pitya. The government is becoming too powerful. They're becoming so powerful that they don't have to care about the law anymore. That is a big danger to us, seriously. Yeah, well, you know, and, and one of the points uh, you guys had talked about on one of the previous shows as well was this qualified immunity deal. And, and yes. Matt, you were kind of touching on that as well. And, and you know, it's, it's funny uh, with police, they, they do have a very tough job, uh, like you were saying. But the idea that, like you're saying, that would be limited to just police, actually... That, that may be the libertarian solution is to have qualified immunity for a much larger spectrum of government because I mean in qualified immunity rather because uh, once you do that then I, I think once people say uh, you know you, you say well you're responsible for you know section a of, of paragraph C of wh whatever it is you know of, of some 3,000 page document and then they say well I don't know that then all of a sudden it, it makes everybody realize, hey, look, things have gotten pretty complicated when the people who are supposed to be responsible are clearly not responsible. <laughs> and, and, you know, maybe that's actually the route to, to get to some of this uh, uh, reduction of the size of government. When everybody starts admitting that it's it's uh, government's gotten too big and complicated that nobody really wants to be responsible for it. So. It's not it's not it's you're being too well, too big. Yes. But it's not too complicated, is, is, is the issue, you know, Jason, quite frankly. It's too big and too powerful. And their, their power right now is destroying our freedom of our, and our liberties. That's a problem. That's a very, very big problem. Well, I, I, I would wager as somebody who, who I guess does work in government, I know you've worked in government too, Leon. I, you know, those codes get awfully complicated really fast. And I, I, talked with certain people who are supposed to be responsible in cases and you ask them about a special provision and and like they literally may not know about it right and so it's like the first they've heard and that's the person who's supposed to be responsible i think that's part of the problem that we have with so many people liking big government is because they just assume they just have faith that this government is out there looking over their shoulder and they totally know what's going on and i think the reality is that most people would be shocked to realize how much isn't really you know known i mean how many little details have fallen through the cracks you know especially over time when one program starts and then it lasts for generations and the people who originally wrote it are gone and it's been amended so many times so it's just you know yeah you know well i will accept your point i will accept your point that the complication um that uh, does provide um it does make for some serious problems for private individuals but those complications, though, will leave us in a situation where a private citizen may be breaking the law just because of those complications. A private citizen may be breaking the law without even knowing it, without even intending to, but will be breaking the law without even without even trying. That, to me, is a big problem. And that is where our liberties and our freedoms become in jeopardy. Maybe, the compli maybe we can meet halfway here on this issue. The complications is causing that problem, that phenomenon to occur where our freedom and liberties are more impacted because of these complications. Well, you know, one place that's not complicated and literally government has just gone off the rails and doing something that's been clearly spelled out by the courts is in this eviction moratorium. We we, yeah. uh, we, we talked about it last week br briefly, uh, but it's, it's just, uh, it's such a big story, especially with regard to property rights that I wanted to touch upon this day, especially since we have a, uh, you know, a, a guest who's worked in government as well here. And, and the idea that, uh, you know, Biden has literally been given instructions by the Supreme Court. And he literally said uh, before a few days before you know, telling the CDC uh, to go ahead with more eviction moratorium. He literally said he didn't think he had the constitutional authority to do it. <laughs> and then and, and the Supreme Court spelled it out to him. They said, no, you don't. You need to go back to the legislature and do this. And I guess he figures since the Supreme Court doesn't have F-15s and nukes that he doesn't have to listen to. Them. <laughs> well, 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 what do you guys think about that? Oh, man, I, I it is... Uh... I don't think it's unprecedented. I'll put it that way. I mean, I do think a lot of presidents, frankly, on both sides of the aisle, but but uh, particularly, um, you know, some of the actions that President Obama took on on immigration policy were uh, beyond anything that was in written law. Uh, Supreme, you know, a number of courts have already weighed in on that, um, and he kind of even expressed it or, or uh, accepted that he knew that at the time when he um, did them. 
and I and certainly this one is just blatant because the Supreme Court had just said it. Uh, I am really hopeful, um, and actually a little bit optimistic that at least like Kagan, uh, Elena Kagan, might side with the uh, conservatives on the court and and slap him down for this. But I wouldn't even be surprised. I, I, I would hope to see a unanimous. Uh, an almost immediate uh, decision. However, I don't. I'm not a lawyer. I don't actually know how that exactly works. But I certainly am a uh, love watching the Supreme Court do its thing, and and I do believe that uh, they will rule really strongly on this in a way that maybe uh, Biden will regret because instead of you know pushing into those gray zones like uh, Obama did, or maybe uh, you know previous Republican presidents as well did, um, they're gonna they're gonna I suspect paint a much brighter line after this decision. Yeah, I, I, I certainly. Oh, I'm sorry, Liam, but, but not much. But I certainly hope that's correct, Matt. Um, reading from one of these articles, uh, one sentence says. Does anyone really believe the founders would approve of the CDC retroactively ripping up millions of legal contracts and unilaterally suspending the property rights of 90% of landlords? Question. If it can do that, what can't it do? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. exactly. Go ahead, Leon. No, 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 no. You, you, you made a point. You, you made a point in, in that statement because to me, there are two issues here. One is taken, right? And it's forbidden in the Constitution. So, Matt, I am not a lawyer, but I play one on TV. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you slept at a Holiday Inn Express last night, right? Yeah. That's right. There you go. There you go. <laughs> so, it's the taken clause. And on top of that, oh, the issue of property, uh, of, of, of property rights. So how could this be anywhere close to being constitutional? There's absolutely nothing nothing in the constitution that allows the government to just unilaterally tell people that the obligations of contracts are no longer valid this is this is unbelievable and probably unprecedented it i i can't top that but i just want to add it's just really bad policy too i'm uh where i'm here in golden colorado and every single restaurant on our main street here in town has a help wanted sign on it uh, right. And and if you don't have to pay rent uh, for your apartment, then there's one more thing you don't have to do to go. Get, you know, you, you don't need to go get a job uh, for. And so uh, there is a there's a desperate need out there for for hiring. Uh, and frankly, a lot. Of, I know uh, one coffee shop owner here in town told me that uh, he has to close four hours early every day because he can't find enough workers. So that's real money. That's going to really hurt the economy. And so this is a bad economic policy, let alone the fact that it is wildly unconstitutional. You're right, there you go. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. Exactly. Yeah, good point. Yeah. You know, there there is a uh, uh, just a, a a podcast that I listen to sometimes, and they kind of opined about this a little bit. It's called uh, Law Talk from the Hoover Institute, and um, I believe what I was hearing from them is that uh, that that's I, I guess um, uh, Epstein and you are the uh, uh, I guess the uh, two. Uh, law professors on that. But uh, I, I believe what they were saying is that the courts, the lower courts could potentially go around and put some kind of stay on the government's uh, order here uh, while this is being adjudicated. So, I mean, because what sure. Biden was trying to say is sort of an end around saying, well, it's going to take them a long time to get back to the Supreme Court. So I'll just do this now and we'll get the few months that I want out of it. But, you know, I, I guess maybe it is possible that there is some power within the courts to actually uh, stop this in short order. So we'll see what happens in the in the coming. Um, well, they could they could issue a stay on, 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 on the order on the order from the CDC. They could do that, which, which, which would be great. And I, and I think and I think they should. But Joe Biden already said that, oh, well, you know, well, we could always um, we could keep this going because we can always appeal. You know, look at what he's trying to do. Right. It's just it's just going to appeal and and hopefully it will keep going that way. I saw that backdoor way to get it done. But if the course is your stay, well, then it will be it will be great. And then then that that avenue will be will be closed off for him. Well, uh, can I just add, think of the uh, the long term implications of, of how the, the Supreme Court's rejection of this will will be used. Um, you know, the I believe 
I've, I, I, I won't quote it, but I know there there is case law that gives uh, incre that increasingly gave administrations more and more power mm -hmm. over the uh, essentially legislative power, right? Like they they let them interpret laws uh, in really more broad ways and and yes. there's this legacy but i know that there are supreme court justices particularly those uh, recently nominated um by president trump uh, that really want to clamp down on this and so this is their choice right this is their big this, I mean, this is their chance pardon me to to really finally fight the administrative state and the growth of the administrative state so i hope uh i hope they do the right thing and rule as strictly as they possibly can Okay. Indeed, yep. indeed, indeed. We are getting to that point in the show where we're uh, getting close to the end, and that's the sound of our knucklehead noise control. So one of the things we like to do uh, is go over something kind of funny that somebody said or something outrageous that somebody said either in uh, you know politics or the media. And so uh, one of those uh, is uh, things that we just came across is that the BBC recently uh, it seems to be pondering whether or not porn should be taught to children. I actually had a, a graphic. Uh, I don't know, uh, James, if you could bring that up or not. <laughs> yeah. And so this is a BBC. We're not making this up. <laughs> uh, now, th this is a, uh, an older article. This is uh, from uh, 2012. Uh, but recently what happened is a, a Sunday Times contributor, a uh, journalist, uh, Flora Gill tweeted, somebody needs to create porn for children. Hear me out. Young teens are already watching porn, but they're finding hardcore aggressive videos that give a terrible view of sex. They need entry level porn, a soft core site where everyone asks for consent and no one gets choked. And just to say that this isn't just one crazy thing from the BBC, because this came out earlier. And that's why I was trying to show this article from 2012. They had the same idea back then. <laughs> it's just resurfacing. And so back in uh, this article, somebody named uh, Dane uh, Jenny Murray uh, was talking about porn in the classroom. He says, why not show kids pornography and teach them how to analyze it? You put boys and girls together in a class, you show them a pornographic film, and you analyze it exactly the same way as you teach them to read all other cultures around them. It's just, you know, I guess I can't think of a better case for school choice. <laughs> <laughs> really? Seriously? Yeah. Well, I okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is this one. Uh, first of all, this is in Britain, correct? I mean, these people that we're we're talking about. Okay, so these aren't Americans. But we have we have cases of that here in the United States too. Yeah. So uh, and that's you publicly know, funded there too. That BBC. So yeah. Oh, that's, <laughs> there you go. Oh, of course. So you, you know, you've got uh, the the point is that uh, just like maybe drugs. Okay, these young kids are going to be. Um, uh, introduced to drugs at a young age. So we might as well make marijuana legal so that at least it's a benign, fairly benign drug to, if they first get introduced or two or some some such thing as like that. I don't know. Um, the thing is, they're, they're going to be, um, they're going to have access to uh, all ki kinds of this, you know, this uh, choking porn they're, they're worried about. And uh, it, yeah, just it, remove it, the choking, and it's great. <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah, exactly. I, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. This is crazy. I got to let somebody else do this. I, I'm <laughs> Anybody have a real quick, uh, quick shot at this? Well, I'll say this. Okay, these people are sick. Okay, they are sick. They win teach reading. They win teach uh, 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 writing. They win teach arithmetic. But they think the best thing to teach our children. Just show them some porn and everything will be good and wonderful in the world. These people are sick. <laughs> well, with that said, uh, you know, with all the discussion of choking, we've about choked off the time for our show. So uh, <laughs> we're getting to that point. But uh, thanks so much. And thanks to our guest today.